intercept in your model. There are a few cases where this might not be um, how you want to do things, but typically you want to go ahead and include the intercept. So now we can go to the next tab, the estimation tab, and this is going to tell us the nuts and bolts of how our model is estimated. Typically, the defaults in SPSS are pretty reasonable, and um, you won't need to change too much here unless you know, for example, you have some kind of data clustering or some kind of correlated data where you might want to choose the robust estimator. It's not the case in our data set because we're pretty confident that each participant um, provides data independently from the other participants. So we'll go ahead and stick with a model-based estimator. The method, we want to go ahead and let the program choose um, whether it's going to be using the Fisher-Newton-Rafeson method. And um, here in terms of the fixed value versus deviance versus Pearson chi-square scale parameter method, you'll get mainly the same kinds of estimates um, for any one of those. You can go ahead and leave that. Now if you have a particularly large model and you're having trouble having it converge, you can try and up your maximum number of iterations. 100 is, I mean, could be for some models relatively low, so you could up that if you needed to, to maybe 200 or 500. And step halving is when the model is having trouble converging. It's going to do some supplementary kinds of iterations that might um, edge it along a little bit. So you can change that and bump that up if you need to. And this default here is going to be okay. Again, you're going to get relatively the same results for the different convergence criteria. And singularity tolerance is just letting us know um, how much singularity, or if two variables are really representing the same thing and they share most of the variance, um, then it's going to go ahead and bump one of them out. And so this is how tolerant it's going to be of um, collinearity in the model. So we're going to go ahead and leave all of those defaults for now. Um, that should be okay. And we'll click on the Statistics tab. Um, most of the statistics um, defaults in SPSS are type 3, and we can go ahead and leave that. The confidence interval at point at 95% is pretty common in the literature, so we can go ahead and stick with that as well. I do like a lot of the fit statistics here, so I'm going to include all of those, and I'm going to add the exponential parameter estimates. Now for Poisson and negative binomial models in particular, the exponential um, parameter estimates are going to be in the form of incident rate ratios. And that's basically just um, the unstandardized coefficients are exponentiated. Um, and they are similar in their interpretation to an odds ratio. And I do have a link on my page that explains odds ratios and incident rate ratios um, for interpretive purposes. But basically, what that's going to mean is for each one point increase in your predictor, um, it's going to indicate the rate of increase um, in your dependent variable. Now, the rest of these are pretty much matrices that you can um, ask for if you're interested in more detailed information um, or iteration history. Um, I typically don't choose those. That's a lot of information that I, if you needed to do some troubleshooting, it might be a place to go, but I typically don't use them. And this is this uh, particular tab lets you um, pull out the estimated marginal means if you're interested in looking at the means for any one group that you have um, for your factors in the model. You can also do that as well. Um, and next, uh, we have a tab where we can save certain output from the model in terms of variables in our SPSS file. Now, this is going to be useful in a few different ways, but the way I typically use it the most is by saving the predicted value of the mean of response and the uh, standardized deviance residual. And the reason why we're going to do that is because we want to examine the residuals as part of like a quality control. Um, the residuals indicate to us um, how far off our model is from the actual data um, that we've collected from participants in terms of the dependent variable. So we definitely want to look at that because if residuals are higher um, for uh, greater levels of responses or for lower levels on our response variable, we're going to want to know that because that might be a signal that there's some kind of bias in the data, that we have some kinds of outliers, or that there's deviation from the expected distribution. 
function. So that's really important to look at in terms of quality control and just being sure that the model is really fitting the data. So you can also, this final tab is exporting. Um, you can export your model as data. Um, so if you're interested in further exploring on your own uh, what you've found, you can do that in some different kinds of ways. Um, you can specify what kind of data files they should be and what data you want to export. And I'm not going to be doing that at this point. So then you can paste this, or of course you can hit return and just have it run. Um, if you want to paste it um, for your own purposes, you can save the syntax file and then you can go back and see exactly what you had done before. You can kind of recreate the session that you're in, which is sometimes helpful. Then you can go ahead and hit this arrow if you want to run this syntax. 